Hello guys and gals and welcome to another exciting episode of Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. This week we're traveling to Lake Norman with one of my buddies, John McCarthy. Today we're going to be doing a little white perch fishing. So stick around and don't go away. I guarantee you we're going to have a real good day today. We're probably even going to catch a few fish. We'll be right back. This week's Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV is brought to you in part by Camelback Hydration Systems. Do you have a camel on your back? And by Bolay Sportswear and Sunglasses. Also by Buckbuster Scents. Scents for the serious hunter. And by Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply. Hunting and fishing products at an affordable price. And also by the fine folks at the Triad Bait Company in Lexington, North Carolina. At Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply, we custom build game calls and tackle the old-fashioned way, from the ground up, one at a time. There's no mass-produced game calls or fishing tackle here, meaning you'll be always sure to get a good quality product at an affordable price. Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply, check us out on the web at thegreatoutdoorsandbeyond.com, on eBay at Carolina Outdoor Store, or Facebook at Carolina Outdoor Hunting and Fishing Supply.
Get him, John, get him. You don't, don't give your ration to the water. Just get the poor thing out. Nice. Let him fight, nice. John. Let him fight. Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> Tell the people that. Hey, there we go. See? You catch a bait now. <laughs> Anyways. It's cracking. Look at that. We must have to. We're going to have to keep him. That's a nice crappy there. That's big. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Look at that for a crappy there, folks. Big crappy. And he was in about 30 feet of water. Might just have to bring him home. What a big old slab. Get fish on. Real quick. Might be a white birch. Big white birch? I don't know. Yep. Oh yeah. There you go. There we go. That's what we come here for. Now some people wouldn't catch them like that, but that there's a good white perch right there. Uh, good average size. You wasn't quite as big as that crappy I caught, but that's what we're here for. That's some really good eating right there. So we'll get him in the live well and get a bait on. See if we can't catch some more. We pulled into an island here. I'll put it up on the screen here in a little bit. Underwater hump. Comes up to about 20 feet of water and drops off to 40 and we mark fish all around it. Somewhere out here I got a marker. It's the only place we found bait this morning. Um, further on up the river with all the rain we've had, it's really been muddy and nasty the past couple days so we had to come way down the lake to get in the cleaner water but that's what we're looking for and uh john's getting his rods out and we'll see if we can't get a few more in the boat not as big as that other one this one we won't be keeping this one i don't think well wait a minute now he's getting frisky nah that's a baby baby of the bunch baby of the bunch them are the kind we don't want that's how you make that fish look bigger. I'll bet that fish right now looks to be about two pounds. But, uh, all right, that's two fish in two minutes. Let me get another bait, Mr. Cameraman. Baby rod. You got another white perch? Yeah. Keeper? Borderline, huh? He, he ate it. I'll let you be, I'll let you use your own discretion on that one because it's kind of borderline, I guess. You notice how they do that? Boy, the minute you grab them, they stick that gill. Whoa, here we go. Oh, man. Pull that gill plate right out. Is that coming uh, out? There's some pliers in this boat someplace. Come on, fish on. All right. <laughs> Fishing with two rods and that ain't still in it. There's another baby. I guess I'm fishing in the nursery today. But we're catching fish and having fun. But we want them a little bit bigger than that, folks. You got one, Jim? That's how, that's how it's going down. <laughs> it's been going down. <laughs> Jim says it's been going down. He's not a very big one. That I can tell you. We're in the nursery now, John. Well, we'll find them. All them little ones, there's gotta be a few big ones here and there. I hope. Be nice to catch a few big ones. But heck, we got a big crappy, we got a big white perch, so. Try it again. I don't know if I told you before what we're doing, but we Put a marker out. I, I think I've been down that road already. And there's a hump right here. 37 feet and I'm dropping off. And me and John just came over the top of this hump. As we came over it, we caught them bigger fish. And it's just basically, this is really simple what we're doing. I'm using a trolling motor and we're, we're doing what we call tight lining right over the side of the boat. 
we'll let our line go all the way down to the bottom. And you got to really watch your depth finder when you're doing this. But let your line all the way down to the bottom. And when it go, the line goes slack, I'm at uh, 38 feet right now. Then all I do is I just reel my tip down and reel about four or five times and set it in the rod holder. Now I know right now I'm at 38 feet, so you gotta watch your depth finder. If you come up, you gotta bring your lines up as you start to come up uh, in shallower water because if you don't, you're gonna get hung up. And that, then it just takes a lot of time to get your rods all straightened out and cut and untangle. And so, you know, you're really doing this technique, you've got to watch your depth and watch your lines all the time. And drift over the fish, find the bait you'll find the fish I'm using an autopilot trolling motor up front here and it makes it really nice because I can set the boat in the direction I want to go and if the autopilot's on I don't have to even like right now I don't even have to watch anything but my rods and John's rods and keep an eye on what's going on in the boat because the autopilot is going to keep me going the same speed in the same direction whether the wind's blowing or whether I'm in back of the boat or anything so if you don't have that and all you have is a regular foot controlled trolling motor it works just as good it's just a little bit harder because you got to stay on the trolling motor all the time but it's a real simple technique for you to go and do uh, this is toward the end of December right now and we've got 70 degree temperature here in North Carolina it's really kind of weird weird weather right now and I think the fish are probably staying up a little bit more and staying instead of staying deep I'm, a, I'm almost in, in 60 degree temperature water right now and it's the day after Christmas and that's not heard of very much in uh, in North Carolina usually about this time of the year the water temperature is down in the uh, low 50s so we're gonna get back at it and our mark is over here someplace right there and I want to drift right back over that hump again because it seems like them fish are sitting right on top of this hump. I'm kind of just waiting for John to get all his rods lined up down here. You let him catch all them small fish and get them out of my way and I can go ahead and catch the big ones. <laughs> well, the camera lady up here getting my pole. Get my fish. Got one. All right, John's got one. Double, double. Small one. Might have triples in a minute. I marked them fish on the depth finder. Boy, they're still down there too, John. 37 feet deep. We got a record here. Ouch. Can't really get in any good size ones just yet. Except for that one that I caught. Still be here. <clears throat> our markers right close right here to our marker right over there and uh, right in this area we came in we're marking a whole bunch of fish it runs from we've been catching them anywhere from 33 feet to about 42 seems to be where they're hanging out around and uh, you got to stay on the bait if you stay on the bait you'll stay on these fish they're going to be reasonably close to wherever the bait's at. They'll not be far from it. Bigfoot baits are a high quality plastic bait chosen by both professional and amateur anglers when they need a bait that will stand up to all kinds of conditions and abuse. Bigfoot baits come in a variety of different shapes and sizes and they are available for the fresh and saltwater anglers. Bigfoot soft plastic baits should be your chosen bait to squash your competition. Buckbuster Sense has been the chosen deer tracking and cover sense for both guides and professional hunters for years. Try our pine cover scent, acorn cover scent, wild apple, and new this year, sweet corn. And if you need a doe or bucket tracking made from our 100% natural formula, then try our doe estrus or buck urine. Stone Mountain Passion to get that Leary Buck Curious or Stone Mountain Buckbuster to make that mock scrape. So if you're looking for a good hunting scent at an affordable price, check us out on eBay at Carolina Outdoor Store or on our websites at The Great Outdoors and Beyond or CarolinaOutdoorStore.com.
Buckmaster Sense, Sense for the Serious Hunter. This segment of Carolina Outdoor Magazine is brought to you in part by Bigfoot Bait. Squash your competition. Buckbuster Sense. Sense for the serious hunter. And also by Quail Hollow Bird Farm. Game birds and bird dog training. Three turns and there he was. Nine. Ah, another small one. Well, that was another small fish. What I did is I threw a marker out in front of the boat because I'm marking a lot of bait between this marker and the one back over here. And by putting a marker out, you know, in the water like this, unless you're using your GPS and you're, you've got your GPS on in the front of the boat and you're marking where you are and, and that type of thing, it's so much easier sometimes just to throw a marker out because with this much water, it's hard to keep the boat in the exact same part, exact same part of the water you need to be in to keep on fish. So there's no markers out here or anything like that so that, you know, let you know where you're going. So carry you some markers and use them and throw them out when you start getting on a bunch of fish or a bunch of bait. And that'll hold you right in the right area. You trying to catch birds or fish? Both. <laughs> And I'm putting my lines down so that they are anywhere from a foot to two feet off the bottom. And this is the rig we're using. It's more or less just a darn Carolina rig, a little bit bigger one. I'm using about an ounce weight egg sinker right here is what I'm using. And the reason I'm using that is because we're moving the boat real slow and I want to keep it so my pole is straight down over the boat. I don't want my lines out drifting around getting tangled up in the John's rod. So. And then I come down off my swivel. Now John puts a bead on his, but I just kept breaking mine off and I was too tired to put a bead on, but that bead works good because it also acts as a little clicker and makes a little noise and it protects that knot too. And I got about two feet a liter from the swivel and then I'm using a circle hook. And that's a real small uh, number four circle hook right there. And it works real good because these, there you go, John's got one. Another Small white one. perch. Big hitter. But you can tell if it was a striper, he'd be the yelling and the hooting and the hollering. Bass. Oh, look at that little bass. Boy, that is a little bass. Some of these bass boat guys racing around today would be happy to catch that one there, John. Anyways, like I was saying, that's just a real small number four circle hook. And the reason I like these in this circumstance is because these white perch will come along and they're very aggressive fish. They'll come along and they'll basically hook themselves on that hook. I haven't got to do much hook setting. I just reach down, grab the pole, and start reeling. I think John's got a fish on the back of the boat. This is a better one. All right. Maybe you got a keeper, huh? Yeah, this is on the. This thing acts like a catfish. Really? It could be. Or it's tangled up in my lines. Oh, no. So the boat drifted backwards. What a mess. We got No, he's been on there for a while swimming around your lines. That trolling motor is on constantly. We aren't drifting backwards. Swallowed it. Bring him in. Oh, there's the big boy. That's why your lines are tangled up. They weren't tangled a second ago, though. <laughs> there's the big Oh, there's a big boy right there. All right. Hold still. He swallowed it too. Boy, you're gonna be. You're, this will be great because John will be out of the water for a while, and I'll be able to catch some fish. Here, John, put that. Come here. I don't know what the heck to do. Put that. <laughs> Look at the difference there in them. That's a keeper one, and that's a that's a throwaway one. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I do. Let me see what it, where is that in his mouth. You get him out? I might be. Here, I got the fish. What see do you that? want me to do? See that front? Th All right, there's one of them take it home fish. All right. Back in the sweet spot. Back in the sweet spot. Okay. 
feels like might be a keeper. I don't know. Ah, we might just have to put him in the keeper box there. Yeah. Might be one for the keeper box. Okay, John. Your turn. Huh? Oh, there he is. There's a fish. There's a fish. Don't think he's a keeper. There's a John fish. <laughs> Five small ones and then we get a big one. I guess we'll take what we could get. We could probably be up here catching nothing. But we'll um, that was doing something. just keep working away at it. Before the day's out, we'll probably have a mess of nice white perch. There goes John again. Oh, this is a fighter here. Got a fighter, got a fighter, got a piece. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, there we go. There we go. Let me have the pull. I got it. <laughs> this is a good one, too. It's a real good one. Yeah. That's called two at a time. See, I had to get them little ones out of the way. <laughs> There we go. All right. Put them in the bucket. I'm, I'm going to get my fish right here. All right. Seem to be on them, John. Where's the marker? Right on the top of this hill. There's another good one. The marker's way over there. Oh, right? boy. There's You're a good over one. where you caught that first big one. Just look. Yeah. See the marker? Yeah. The first fish you caught was before we got to the marker. All right. So there's your spot, man. I'll tell you what I need to do. If I can find one. Let me put this fish up. I need to throw another marker out so we can keep a rough idea of where we're at. All right, finally got him unhooked. Ooh, that's the bad side. It will give you the good side. I'm getting a few fish in there in that cooler. Getting some nice ones. Fish him what? <laughs> this ain't a very big one, I can tell you that. Hello. Come on. Alright. Yeah, this one here. I'll see him back. Way too small. Working on fish in the back of the boat. Okay, guys, thanks for tuning in to this week's show. We really appreciate you taking the time and watching. We hope we was able to show you a few little tips that we use out there when we're catching white perch. And you know, folks, it's not always the biggest fish you catch or how many you catch, but it's just been able to get outside and enjoy the outdoor experience. So once again, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you watching, and I'm Jim from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. We'll catch you somewhere next week in the great outdoors when we do it all again.